Hi, this is Bill here at President and Founder of PowerStrokeHelp.com, and I'm here today to talk to you about Selective Catalyst Reduction, SCR. Selective Catalyst Reduction is a new exhaust treatment that has been installed on the 2011 Ford PowerStroke with the new improved Ford 6.7 liter uh, diesel engine. I'm here today at Peach State Ambulance Company down here in Tyrone, Georgia. Uh, good friends of mine, I've known them forever and ever. And we've got cabs and chassis here that are going to be made into ambulances. So it's very easy to see this SCR system on these chassis. The idea of selective catalyst reduction is nothing new. It's actually been used in fossil fuel uh, uh, electrical plants, uh, coal fire plants, for many decades. It's actually uh, something that's been around for a very long time. The idea is to take the exhaust as it travels through the smokestack in, in, in a power plant or out of the exhaust of a diesel truck and inject urea, uh, in our case it's called a diesel exhaust fluid, into the exhaust stream. Um, in fact, diesel exhaust fluid is primarily water. It's only a small percentage of it is the active ingredient. This system, what it does is it, it injects into the, into the exhaust stream and it takes the nitrogen oxides and breaks them down into nitrogen and water which is far better for the environment than the nitrogen oxides. So what we're going to take a look at here today is a 2011 cab and chassis, uh, sh short cab. It's going to be made into an ambulance at some point. And so it's easy because it's a short cab, it's easy to see the whole system right here behind the cab. Now, those of us who have become familiar with the 6.7 and, and, the, and the 2011 model year is, has seen this little blue cap. This is where you pour your diesel exhaust fluid. And it travels here into a little tank. It sits right here inside the frame rail. Okay? And it's got a pump and some sensors and whatnot right on top of the, right on top of the tank. A very simple system, wiring harness that wires into the, into the main harness, a very, very simple system. Uh, and here's the line, and here's, here's the hose. And the hose feeds right around underneath the cab and into the SCR. The actual selective catalyst is integrated into the exhaust system in between the catalytic converter up front and the DPF behind it. Now, anybody who's taken a look at a 6.4 2008 to 2010 truck is familiar with the idea that they have both the catalytic converter and the DPF. The catalytic converter, of course, takes some of the initial nitrogen oxides out, and the DPF takes soot and converts it into ash. Okay, it actually reduces the black smoke coming out of the exhaust pipe. The SCR finishes up where the catalytic converter left off and converts the rest of the nitrogen oxides into straight nitrogen and water. But this is the extent of the system. It's very simple and it's extremely effective. I had a truck that came into my shop uh, a week or two ago that was a 2011, had about 50,000 miles on it. The man, the man uses this truck. He's constantly pulling, constantly running. and uh, he uh, was in for an oil change, and when it was up in the air, I had the exhaust pipe right, you know, basically at eyeball level while we were changing the fluids and checking everything out. The thing that surprised me was that when I ran my finger inside the exhaust on a 50,000 mile truck, it was virtually clean. There was the very slightest hint of a very fine ash on the towel pipe, and that's it. That's amazing. I mean, compared to what a truck was doing 10 years ago or even 5 years ago, it really is quite incredible what this exhaust system is capable of. We can get a better look at the cans right here underneath the side of the truck uh, below the frame rail. The chemical process for selective catalyst reduction is fairly simple. The idea is to eliminate nitrogen oxides in your exhaust stream. The idea of mixing nitrogen oxide in the urea molecule here, okay, mo uh, uh, urea is a close cousin to ammonia, to suffice it to say that, but by combining these plus oxygen, and then we have the chemical reaction here, we end up with nitrogen, water, and carbon dioxide. Now fully understand where selective catalyst reduction fits into the picture, let's talk about the breakdown and the progression of emissions controls in these trucks uh, from the beginning. In the beginning there was a catalytic converter, a catalyst basically, that uh, I saw on West Coast trucks as far back as 1994. Basically it's just a can that's located in line on the exhaust that, that helps reduce nitrogen oxides. Real simple thing, it's been around in gasoline, it's slightly modified for the diesel. 
The problem is, is that they would burn up and they would get clogged in this sort of thing and then very quickly became ineffective, especially if you had any tuning. So most people just cut them out. That's what they did. EGR was introduced with a 6 liter. It was a fiasco. Uh, EGR coolers breaking open, EGR valves hanging open. Uh, there's mountains of documentation online about what uh, the shortcomings of the EGR system. But the idea of exhaust gas recirculation, just like it is in, in uh, automobiles, is to take some of the exhaust gas that was going to go out the tailpipe and run it back through the, uh, the engine, run it through the combustion process one more time. Let's, let's process it one more time. And it worked okay, but it kills your fuel economy, it kills the power of the engine. So exhaust gas recirculation works, but only marginally. DPF was introduced in the 2008 model year with a 6.4 engine and that was an even bigger nightmare than exhaust gas recirculation. In fact, the exhaust EGR system on the 2008, if the cooler cracks open, <laughs> number 8 cylinder fills full of coolant, engine goes boom, oops, time for a warranty claim for a motor. Uh, the DPF was even more sinister in the way it would destroy an engine. The way DPF works is it's designed to take carbon, uh, the black soot that comes out of a, a diesel tailpipe, and convert it into ash. In other words, there's this can back there that catches all of the black sooty carbon and, and then what happens, it goes into a regeneration mode where it takes the sooty carbon and it heats it up and turns it into ash and blows the ash out the tailpipe. The problem is, is the manner in which they would go about heating it up. What the system, the way it worked was when it went into regen mode, was it would start squirting fuel in on the exhaust stroke on seven and eight cylinders. So now you've got this 1200, 1500 degree heat that goes up your Y pipe, through your turbocharger, which puts wear and tear on the turbocharger and the seals, and out the exhaust and heats up the, heats up the soot and turns it to ash. Well, I can't tell you how many motors I've replaced uh, in 6.4s that have holes burnt in the number seven eight pistons. Um, turbochargers that have uh, uh, just been absolutely burnt to a crisp, uh, and the DPF is a somewhat, it's, it's effective, but it's pretty much in the 6.4 application didn't work very well. These were the two main things that would kill a 6.4, is the EGR system and the DPF system. So in the 2011 model year, they came out with selective catalyst reduction, which you've seen outlined in how it works in the early part of this video. Well. The beauty of the selective catalyst reduction is that it takes the load off the EGR system to convert nitrogen oxides. So as a result, the EGR system doesn't have to be activated as much, the engine doesn't run so hot, the, the valve doesn't get as sooty, so, the, uh, so the, the same effect, net effect, is achieved through SCR. The 2011 model Ford truck with the 6.7 engine in it has all of these systems. Catal a catalytic converter, EGR valve, uh, and in EGR cooler, uh, diesel particulate filter, selective catalyst reduction. It has all of them. That's what is, has to be done in order to meet the emission standards of 2011 model year. And by 2013, 2014, they're even going to get tighter. I mean, I, I guess they want you to be able to wrap your lips around the pipe and take a deep breath and not die from it. One of the key design changes on the 6.7 that, that is going to make the engine much, much more reliable than the 6.4 and the 6.0 is that it has two separate cooling systems. One of the problems that you would have in the 6.4 engine from 2008 to 2010 is that the EGR cooler split, all the engine coolant went into the engine or went out the exhaust, it would either burn up or it would fill up a cylinder and it caused all kinds of problems inside the engine when you'd have an EGR cooler failure. Because the 2011 6.7 has two separate cooling systems, one cooling system for the EGR system. So if there's any breakdown in the system or a leak or, or a, a broken fitting, then the engine coolant, the actual coolant that cools the engine, is preserved. Now I'm talking two separate systems. I'm talking two separate water pumps. I'm talking two separate radiators. I'm talking two completely separate cooling systems. It's pretty complicated when you get under the hood of the truck, but the fact is, is that Ford was after reliability. And Ford took all of the breakdowns, all of the knowledge that they had of, of the last 10 years of getting beat up and thrown into the train with a 6 liter and the 6.4 and, and the horrific warranty claims that they had to pay uh, to come up with a 6.7. The last thing that is significant or maybe more significant than, than the rest of the systems here is electronic fuel control. The control systems in the computer that operates the fuel system in the 6.7 is absolutely amazing. 
the, the, just think think about your laptop or your or your your desktop computer and and the increase in speed that you can buy for pennies on the dollar compared to what it was ten years ago. That's what we're dealing with here. We're dealing with a, such a high level of precision of fuel control and fuel metering that during warm up, which is when diesels are the dirtiest, is when they're cold and they're warming up. You can the, the computer measures the 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 fuel flow precisely. Okay, when it gets partially warmed up, when you're underway, when you're when you're when you're it's activating all of these systems, it does it with such a level of precision. You know, knowledge is cumulative, and Ford Motor Company engineers have been on the road testing and testing and testing and testing and testing for the last 10 years to be able to meet the emissions control requirements and not have a loss of power. After driving a truck equipped with a 6.7 engine in 2011 2012, there's no reason to take any of this off of here. The only reason to eliminate the EGR cooler on a 6.0 is to keep you from blowing the motor up or overheating it. The only reason to take a DPF off of a 6.4 is, is to keep from blowing holes in the pistons on 7 and 8. I mean, it's reliability. Yeah, you pick up a little fuel economy, but you know, when you when you have to pay twelve and fifteen, eighteen thousand dollars to replace your engine because one of these systems failed, well that's a real hard pill to swallow. What I'm saying is is that the engineering is finally caught up with reliability here and the cumulative knowledge that Ford Motor Company uh, engineers have put into this engine is really quite astonishing. And these systems all working together make it an effective, fuel efficient, powerful engine. And frankly, I wouldn't mess with any emissions controls on this system unless you're, you know, you're a performance junkie, but that's a, that's a different animal. Up until now, we've seen no reliability issues with any of the emissions control systems on these trucks. And I hope it stays that way for Ford Motor Company's sake and all the heat that they've taken over the last, you know, uh, almost a decade with all these trucks they put out that have been so problematic. Selective catalyst reduction uh, is a very important part of keeping the environment safe and clean. Um, the only downfall to it is is that if there is problems with it, the parts to fix the system are relatively expensive. So if you're going to own a truck that has a selective catalyst system on it uh, and you intend to maintain it, uh, it's probably a good idea to go ahead and keep the extended warranty on your truck, make sure it covers these parts, uh, before you sign the paper uh, so that if there is any issues in the future you can get them replaced.